So the funding of capital projects for schools is a very complex picture. Now in Fairfax County, again, we're the 10th largest system. We have 190 schools plus um, almost 200 now. And um, that's a lot of capital infrastructure to maintain and we're growing. So we have tremendous costs. You know, our footprint is four times the size of the Pentagon. Um, and so we have, uh, this community has been very supportive of all the capital bonds, you know, that go to schools, parks, everything. Um, but still, it's not enough. We estimate that we are between 150 and $200 million short every year in capital funding to keep up with the need, the need for renovations and additions and new construction. We have almost a thousand classrooms in trailers right now. Um, so part of that, and the reason I say it's complicated, is, you know, part of the fact that there are trailers is that we sort of have a culture here that if you move into a neighborhood, you will go to that school. You know, we don't say, well, that school is full, so we're going to bus you over to another school. We don't, we're, um, it's very hard for us just culturally to change boundaries. So what we do is we just put a trailer park out in the back of the school. So some of that is probably us not using our space efficiently enough. Um, but uh, the other part of it is, you know, the Board of Supervisors, again, the county board, um, puts the bond issues up for vote, and they have to worry about the bond rating of the county, because as long as we keep a AAA bond rating, which we have, um, borrowing is less expensive, and therefore we can do more with all of our capital dollars. So it's a balance there. Um, uh, but uh, I, I think, uh, it's my understanding, that we could probably ask more of, of uh, in terms of our bond issue and the balance between county property and schools property um, is I, I want to say it's about 20 percent county property and 80 percent schools property but the school system only gets about 55 percent of the bond proceeds every year yeah so this is a story that we have to tell as well so the community knows you know um, uh, that you know we really don't have other ways to fund construction. Um, and so what happens is we stop doing maintenance. We stop doing major and long-term maintenance. We put off our um, renovation cycle, you know, um, beyond what's an industry standard. And that just begins to catch up with everybody at some point.